Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at exporting a custom humanoid character from Character Creator 4 as an OBJ file in order to import it into Blender to create an expression and Visim system. You can also follow this procedure using FBX format as well, and we have a separate tutorial for that. You can find that and all sorts of other related tutorials by visiting our course page at courses.reillusion.com. Before you get started, you'll want to make sure that your character is defined as a humanoid type in CC4. Since humanoid characters can't use the CC4 Morph Editing tool, we need to export the character with a default expression blend shape template and create the blend shapes using another 3D tool. In this case, we're using Blender. To get started, let's load up the Facial Profile Editor, which you can find in either the Animation tab of the Modify panel, the Window menu, or by using the F8 hotkey. If you click on Edit Expressions, you will see the standard CC4 expression profile appear. It also contains an 8 plus 7 phoneme pair set of blend shapes for lip and tongue that are used for lip syncing. This is the template we will use to create our blend shapes. If you're a ZBrush user, there's a quick tool called GoZ at the bottom that allows you to export the character as an OBJ directly into ZBrush. In this case, we're exporting to Blender, so I'm going to go up to the File menu and choose Export to OBJ, then keep facial expressions in Nude Bind Pose. Axis needs to be Y up, and for part, we're going to have full body selected. Once the export is complete, you'll have two items. Coyote Original OBJ is simply the character model, while the OBJ key file contains the data of the character's bone position, which we'll need when importing. Speaking of importing, that's the next step. In Blender, you can import from the File menu by choosing Wavefront OBJ. In the Blender File View panel, be sure that you check polygroups under Keep Vert Order on the Geometry section to ensure that you keep all of the vertex data. Now that our character is in, let's get started by creating our first blend shape. In this case, I'm going to do a simple eye blink for our eye blink left slider. Let's activate wireframe mode under Viewport Overlays and then switch to Edit Mode once the character is selected. I want to hide the eyeball temporarily here, so I'm going to select the face on the eyeball and then use the L hotkey to select all vertices and faces for the eyeball. I can then proceed to use the H hotkey to hide the eyeball submesh. Once that's done, I'm going to switch over to Sculpt Mode. Since I want to focus on the upper eyelid of my character, I'm going to go down and use the Line Mask tool to mask out the lower part of the eye socket. It's very key to remember here that we don't want to change the number of faces or vertices on our character model. If we do, there will be an error upon import. What I'll do next is use the elastic deform and drag the eyelid vertices down to create our closed eye blink blend shape. Once the blink is finished, don't forget to use the Alt M hotkey to remove the mask. After that, it's time to export. You can choose Export OBJ from the file menu and be sure to name it consistently with the slider in CC4. Also be sure to check polygroups and keep vertex order under geometry. Once that's done, we can import that blend shape into Character Creator. Again, with Edit Expressions active, let's click the Edit button on our target slider and choose the iBlink OBJ as our target morph. For the checksum file path, we want to choose that OBJ key file that I mentioned earlier. Once that's done, then bam, we have our first blend shape that you can test out by using the respective slider. Now that you're familiar with how to import an OBJ blend shape, let's take a look at editing a facial bone using the proportion tool. I'm going to define the jaw open slider here, so let's start by going down to open up the proportion tool, which will display the character's facial bones. I'll then proceed to select my character's jawbone and use the rotation gizmo to open the mouth. After we're done, we can export the character to Blender to further sculpt it. I'll just export as an OBJ from the file menu, being sure to have Keep Facial Expressions and New Bind Pose selected. We'll end up with a jawopen.obj and an OBJ key file with the same name. Once in Blender, I'll open the Jaw Open OBJ from the File menu. Again, in the Geometry section of the Import window, we want to ensure that Polygroups is selected under Keep Vert Order to retain all of the vertex data. After that, let's enter into Sculpt Mode. I'll just do some very simple expansion of the mouth mesh by using the Elastic Deform tool and enabling X-axis symmetry. This just adds a bit of emphasis to the jaw open blend shape. After that, we can export it once again as an OBJ. 
I've added a 1 at the end of the name here to differentiate it from our original OBJ that we exported from CC4. Again, you'll want to make sure that polygroups and keep vertex order are both checked in the geometry section. Okay, back in CC4, let's click the edit button for the jaw open blend shape and load in our OBJ exported from Blender. In the checksum file path, we also want to load the original OBJ key file exported from CC4. The OBJ key file allows us to transfer bone data between CC4 and other 3D tools. Once that's done, you can check the result with the slider. When you've finished all of the other expression slider settings, you can open the animation player to apply a facial animation template to test on your character. The step template does a frame by frame look at each slider in a sequence, while the full face template blends together some common expressions so that you can see a more natural transition. Okay, let's take a look at creating visine blend shapes now for lip syncing. You can see that the default CC4 visine template is the 8 plus 7 phoneme pair that contains 8 mouth shapes and 7 tongue positions. Using these in combination allows for accurate lip sync on your character. In this example, I'm going to create a blend shape for the V tongue curl U slider. Back in Blender, let's again import in our original OBJ mesh with all the same settings we used previously. I'll start again by switching over to edit mode and then selecting any face on the tongue and proceed to press the L hotkey to select all of the vertices and faces for that sub mesh. I'll then go up to invert my selection and use the H hotkey to hide all of the rest of the character mesh since we're only focused on the tongue here. Then I'll switch over to sculpt mode and use the same elastic deform tool with X axis symmetry in order to create our curled up tongue that sort of looks like a Nike swoosh. Once that's done, I'll again export as an OBJ, keeping the naming consistent with the slider name in CC4. Once that's done, let's again use the edit button for the tongue slider we're defining and import in the OBJ from Blender and use the original OBJ key file in our checksum file path field. You can then see our tongue curl up when we adjust the slider position. That's really all there is to creating custom blend shapes in Blender for use with your character's expression and visim templates. Let's take a brief look at animating the character in iClone next. Once we get out of edit expression mode, we can use the send to iClone button at the top. In iClone, we can use the face key tool for frame by frame facial animation or tweaking existing animations. In the muscle section, you can select individual facial sections from the reference image and click and drag to manipulate them. The expression section contains a number of preset expression templates that you can simply apply by clicking on them. Finally, the Modify section contains all of the blend shape sliders in the standard expression template that you defined previously. iClone also contains a number of other innovative facial animation tools, including the Face Puppet tool, which allows you to puppet your character's face in real time using your mouse movements. There is also facial mocap with your iPhone using the Live Face Profile, which allows for quick and extremely accurate capture in no time. That's it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.